So here you are, you're towing your trailer down a two lane highway, speed limit 65, you're doing 68, and everybody and their cousin is passing you. It seems dangerous, it is dangerous. What are some of the things you can do? Hey, in this video, I wanna talk about that, other towing experiences, other towing problems, and we might even discuss uh, trailer construction here a little bit because there's some things I have on my mind I want to talk to you about. Stay tuned for that. Linda and I are camped here along the Snake River, not too far from Twin Falls, Idaho, just watching it drift by peacefully, predictably, that's how towing should be. But sometimes towing seems almost chaotic. Towing doesn't have to be like that. People tow all over the United States. Look at all the semi trucks towing freight all over the United States. And sometimes they're moving pretty slow, but they still get the job done and they get it done safely. We're back in the smoky air. I'm sorry, it's affecting my throat here. I'm not, uh, I'm kind of hoarse. I, it's morning time been breathing this smoke all night. It's not good. One situation that comes to mind right now uh, is you're on, it's, it's, if you're on a four lane highway, it doesn't matter. For one thing, Linda and I normally tow at about 55 to 57 miles per hour. And there's three reasons for that. Let me see if I can remember them. No, I'm just kidding. But one of the reasons is um, I feel safe at 50 to 57 miles per hour. When you're towing, it takes you longer to stop. So 65, 70, um, it's gonna take you a lot longer, twice as long, maybe, who knows, a lot longer to stop when you're towing a trailer. So at around 55 miles an hour, I feel safe. Handling is safer at 50 to 55 miles an hour in case something goes wrong, like a blowout. You know, you don't know when you're gonna lose a tire or hit something that's gonna cause a tire to go. And at the slower speed like that, you have more time to react. And the third reason is an important one, fuel mileage. At 55, I get about two miles per gallon better than I do at 70. And at the price of gas these days, that's a considerable amount. The difference for me on a tank of gas is 56 miles. The difference between 55 miles an hour and 70 miles an hour in miles per gallon equals 56 more miles per tank of gas. That's free miles. Well, they're not free, but that's 56 more miles I can go at 55 than I could go at 70. That's the difference between 13 miles per gallon and 11 miles per gallon on a 26 gallon tank. <laughs> So talking about uh, doing 68 and a 65 and people still passing you, people will pass you just because you're towing. They get behind somebody towing a trailer and they think, I've got to pass this person. They're going slow, they're, to they're towing. And so they're gonna pass you. The problem is if you're already doing the speed limit and somebody's passing you, then you're, then it's, it's going, especially on a, just a two lane highway, sometimes windy, it's extremely dangerous. And it takes them a long time to get around you. One of the things you should be doing is slowing down. It's way easier for somebody to pass you when you're doing 55 than when you're doing 65. Slow down and just drive slower in those conditions and let them be able to pass you more easily. Of course, if you see like three cars stacked up behind you or more, pull off and let them go by. I don't know how many times I did that yesterday, just pulled over, especially when I see a semi behind me, that guy is working, he's doing a job, I'm not. I just wanna get over and let him go by. When he goes to pass me, I make sure I take my foot off the gas and slow down so he can get by me quicker. You ever notice those people that you go to pass them and they step on the gas? What is up with that? I run into that a lot. It's like, this is not a race. I'm just trying to go around you because you were doing 10 miles an hour below the speed limit. And now I want to, you know, I'm not talking about towing here. Anyways, I digress. It's aggravating. One thing that is irritating to me though, is the person that is too timid to pass you or can't pass you for some reason. 
And what happens is you're towing, they get right up on your bumper and they don't pass. Well, now that makes it so the person behind them has a, can't pass either. Because now, not only does that person have to pass a car and a trailer, now it's got to pass a car and a trailer and another car. That's the worst. If for some reason you can't pass, drop back so that a person can pass you and then pass the car and trailer in front. Never ride right behind. You create an impossible situation. Now I'm in a stuck, now if I'm the person towing, I'm stuck in a position where I've got to find a place to pull over and there might not be a place. That's what happens when you see a long string of traffic behind an RV. It's because somebody got right up on their tail and made it so no one else can pass. So if you're that person right behind a trailer or some slow moving motorhome or something like that, get well back so that people can pass you and then pass the RV. Yeah, there are those places, those highways, that no matter how fast you go, people are still going to pass you, even if you're doing the speed limit. But that being said, every highway seems to be different. If I'm on a really busy two-lane with a lot of traffic, people trying to get to work, people trying to get home, I will do my best to do the speed limit. Sometimes that's not always possible because you just don't have the power to pull or you're going uphill or whatever. But if I can do the speed limit safely, I will. But if it's one of those highways where people are going to pass you no matter how fast you're going, you're better off going slower so they can get around you quicker. And once again, you get a string of traffic behind you, try to find a spot to safely pull over and let them go by. So I want to reiterate that point that if you have a truck passing you Take it out of cruise control, back off the gas, step on the brake a little bit if you have to, let him get by as quickly and safely as possible. This applies even on a four lane road where you got four lane highway. If you're going up a hill and a truck and you're in the right lane and a truck is coming and creeping by you in the left lane, back off and let him by. Number one, you're, back, you're blocking a lot of traffic behind and that truck is just doing his best to get by you and clear the lane again. Now, another thing you can do is in a situation like that where a truck is having a hard time passing you and the passing is going very slowly, once his, the back of his trailer clears the front of your vehicle, flash your headlights at him two times to let him know that he's safely passed. Sometimes when they see you do that, they'll flash their taillights at, tail at you a couple of times as a thank you. Why do we choose to tow and not um, get like a class B uh, van or maybe a class C motorhome or something like that? Or a pickup truck, four wheel drive picker, pickup truck and camper? Everybody has their own needs. For us, we used to take along our ATV and then we got tired of having to unload it every night just to be able to sleep because of the trailer's small, right? No room to sleep in there if the ATV's in there. But what worked for us was having the four-wheel drive Yukon that we can unhitch and then go explore and get up almost any road that the ATV, there's, there's, there's most roads are passable with with the Yukon with, with its four wheel drive. Also towing with the four wheel drive, I used four wheel drive and four wheel low all the time when we're going into the back roads with, with this trailer. So it's nice to have that. Now, if I had a pickup truck and camper, there's gonna be this going on, shaking all your stuff back there. And also there's gonna be a lot of places where you're just too big to go. We can get to those places. So this works for us. So towing is good. I like to be able to unhitch it and drive into town and unhitch it and go explore. And camp is there, it's all set up. I'm never leaving the campsite uh, empty. You know, sometimes you have to put chairs out to keep people from taking that spot. But our camper is just there. The table is set up, the chairs are set up and we can come back and just resume where we left off. It's nice having a trailer that we can unhitch. We like that, that works for us. This is Register Rock. It's between Twin Falls, Idaho and Pocatello, Idaho. I see dates of 1849, 1882. This is, a, this is when all the towing was done by horses. 
Did you see the Indian or the carving where the little boy done it and the rocks over here? Mm -mm. Yeah, a little boy when uh, they come on the Oregon Trail, he uh, he was like seven years old, and he would put his name and the year and all of that. And then years later, he was a famous artist, and he came back and checked it, and he signed it again. I'll go check that out. Yeah. Now, you ha you have a family member here, right? Well, uh, we're not sure how, but Dugan, uh, my husband's family is Dugan's. Yeah. And he knew that Dugan's had come out here, so we're not sure, because you can't read this, you know, and we're not sure how it is, but that's an uncommon name, you know, Dugan, D-U-G-A-N. Gotcha. I see Dugan, 1866. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Well, let's switch gears here and talk about just that. What gear do I tow in? This is a light trailer, and according to the car's manual, I can tow in fourth gear or overdrive. But that changes when you get into hilly terrain that's doing this and the car is constantly shifting between third and overdrive. Then I switch down into third and just stay in third because you don't want the transmission constantly shifting up and down. If you're towing a heavier trailer, then you're gonna to wanna to be in third and not in overdrive. That also applies to towing in he strong headwinds. If it constantly is shifting out of overdrive, then you're gonna to, you're going to wanna to just shift down into third. Now there is the tow haul feature on these uh, GMC and Chevys where you can push the button on the end of the shift column and it'll go into tow haul mode. That's generally for heavy loads and heavy tows and you'll actually get a lot uh, less mileage in tow haul mode. Uh, you don't have to use that if you're towing a lightweight trailer like this. You don't have to use that tow haul mode and your mileage uh, greatly increases. When you go into tow haul mode, it changes the shifting characteristics of the car. It makes it shift um, more solidly between gears and you can feel those shifts. For towing heavier loads, it definitely has its purpose. Now I mentioned that when I'm going into a headwind and I'm in fourth gear and I'm doing 55, sometimes I got to shift down into third gear because of the headwind. And it's good in the transmission shifting between third and fourth. Well, I just shift down into third. But you see, that's the thing too, when you're doing 70, if you're doing 70, you're going to have to be in third because of the increased windage, the increased wind on the front of your vehicle. You'll have to be in third. Of course, that really cuts into your fuel economy because now you're in third and you're doing 70 and that's where you lose those two miles per gallon. That's where I lose it. What about the weight of the trailer versus windage? I can tell you this from my own experience. If I put my 700 pound ATV inside this trailer, my mileage stays about the same. It's the windage that makes the biggest difference. Unless I'm going up over a steep mountain pass and then I'm dragging that weight up over the hill. But on just level cruising, the weight makes very little difference. It's the wind on the front of the trailer. Excuse the door being open, but this is what the wind sees. Of course, the higher it is and the wider it is, the, biggest, the bigger the difference is going to be. But according to the fuel economy studies done for truckers, the windage on the front is is not is only a small portion of it it's the suction on the back as you drag a trailer through the air that's got a big flat back on it there's a tremendous amount of suction going on back here with the world with the wind swirling a little teardrop trailer doesn't have that effect these trailers do as do most trailers the faster you try to go down the highway the more suction you're creating in the back here and you're dragging that suction along, that is actually more substantial than the windage on the front. So basically it's just another excuse to go slower to improve your fuel mileage. It should go without saying that you need to make, make sure your tire pressure is exactly where it needs to be for the load you're carrying. Also, folks don't realize that trailer tires have a speed rating on them and you should not exceed that. Most trailer tires are around 80 miles per hour as a max. Some are 75, some as low as 65. You don't want to exceed that or those things will come apart on you, especially when they get hot. Now out here in the West, our speed limits are 80 miles an hour on the interstates around here. So you're pushing your trailer tires to the max at that point. 
and you're risking a blowout, that's another good reason to go slower. Just two weeks ago, Linda and I witnessed a, a fella pour, pulling a 16-foot camp trailer with a Porsche. Now, yeah, he had the horsepower to do it, but he didn't have the vehicle weight for stability. In an emergency situation like a blowout, that's, that trailer would have been steering him and not him steering the trailer. The tow vehicle weight need, and the length of the wheelbase, you can't have a short wheelbase like that and have any stability and any control in an emergency situation. You need a longer wheelbase and your tow vehicle has to have some weight to it so you control the trailer rather than the trailer controlling you. Oh, there's a rugged hitch for you. It's on the back of this World War II surplus vehicle by the name of Honey. We're just taking a break from the highway here in one of the biggest or the biggest army surplus store I have ever been in. It's in Idaho Falls on the south end of town just off the highway by the Love's gas station. What an amazing place. As a little bonus here on this towing video, I want to talk a bit about um, um, this trailer, trailers like this, trailers that are made like this. Um, when Linda and I went to this trailer is because we had already had three trailers fall apart on us from going down the kind of roads we go down. That twisting, torquing motion when you take a commercially made camp trailer down a, 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 a dirt road and the whole frame twists and it makes the trailers break open on the front seams. This seam uh, on, a, on a regular trailer, you'll, you, it'll start opening up and that's because the whole box is twisting and they, they tend to open up here. So we went with this style trailer because it's all welded construction. And of course, for the roads we go down, we needed that. <laughs> and this, is, this has been going for years, it's just fine. But nowadays you can buy commercially made trailers that are made to go down rough roads. Some of them quite large, like the Outdoors RV trailers. Uh, I think they've got like a 26 or 28 footer. I don't know all their sizes, but they're built with a really heavy frame that's designed to go down rough roads. Of course, um, when the terrain gets too undulating, you're going to be uh, dragging the rear end of, this, of, tra of a trailer that long and digging in the front end. So there's that. That's why we stick with a single axle. It tends to clear everything. But anyway, my point was there are trailers made to go down rough roads nowadays, but they're quite expensive. These cargo trailers, you can pick them up fairly reasonably, especially if you, especially if you find them used and build them out yourself. Yeah, they're not fancy looking, but they get the job done better than some other things. Well, I hope you gained something from this video. I know that as I'm driving along and I'm towing, I'm thinking about all of these things and thinking about a way of passing that on to you. I hope this helped. And I hope you enjoyed a little bit about the differences in, in, in trailer design and, and off-road capabilities and give you some ideas there too. Hey, thanks for coming along, you guys. We enjoyed having you with us. See you around.